I think that we're faced with violence on a fairly regular basis. And sometimes what happens is we don't recognize what's happening to us as violence. I was in a difficult marriage for many years, and I would have called it a difficult marriage. And in hindsight, it should have been called an abusive marriage. You know, I went through quite a serious sexual assault, but I didn't name it that at the time. In my head, that guy was being a jerk, and you know, I wish I had done things differently, and so I accepted a lot of the blame for what happened. And so I think having an understanding of what violence actually is and what it encompasses, if you tell somebody you should take a self-defense course, uh, they have an image in their mind of, first of all, beating up a guy in a padded suit, and secondly, they have an image of uh, somebody jumping out at them from the bushes, and they're gonna grab them, and they should, you know, then they can get their ninja skills on and know what to do. And for most people, when they are sexually assaulted, it comes from someone that we already know. And so your ninja responses are just not what's required. We have to have a completely different skill set, a completely different tool set to deal with that type of violence. So our workshops have a very small physical component for emergency, right? If I do find myself in a situation where there is sudden physical violence, I would like to make sure that all of the students know what to do about that but most of our tools that are required come out of very different types of situations. And sexual assault on campus is kind of the, the culmination of that. I think if we're thinking about sexual violence in particular, it's really pervasive, you know, because it's so personal. And because we have a lot of funny taboos in our culture around sexuality, uh, people feel very embarrassed. Um, and so it's a, it can be a challenging thing for people to deal with, especially because we often feel like we're the only person that this has ever happened to. And so it's more difficult to get the word out. For women, it's difficult for us to discuss sexual violence because we should have followed all the rules, right? We shouldn't have gone out alone. We should have been careful about what we were wearing. We should have had our keys in our hand. We shouldn't have drank too much, whatever it is. We were supposed to follow all of those rules. And if we didn't follow one of those rules, um, and then something happens to us, well, right? Then we put the blame on us. I'll tell you that I have seen lists of safety tips for women. If you did everything on that list, you would have to live in a white padded room. There's no possible way that anyone can actually do all of the things that we're instructed to do as women. And we're instructed to do it from the time that we're very, very small, right? On the other hand, for men, now remember that in Canada, one in six men is sexually assaulted before he turns 18. So we are talking about huge numbers, right? One in four girls, one in, four, one in six boys. So if you're a man and you're sexually assaulted, there's a whole construct around that that you should have been able to protect yourself. You should have been able to take care of business, right? So all of those types of things can make it very challenging when someone is sexually assaulted for them to seek the help that they need and the support that they need after the fact. In terms of healing from sexual violence, one of the most important factors, and this is from research that's recently come out of the States, uh, Jocelyn Hollander, who's an amazing researcher out of Oregon, um, is to do an empowerment style violence prevention or self-defense course because one of the things that you learn is that it's not your fault. And allowing yourself to believe that, understanding that, oh, it's nothing that I did wrong. It has everything to do with the person who chose to be violent on that particular day or occasion. Um, that opens a gate to being able to walk through and find your own healing. I think that it's really important for victims to feel like they're empowered in their voice and empowered in their choices so that they're able to make choices in their everyday life and to set boundaries that are really important to them in order to, or so that they feel safe and they're able to communicate to others the kind of behaviors that make them most comfortable. When that's possible, it's easier for those people to live their everyday life, it's easier for them to go to class because they don't need to worry so much about little things. They're able to shape the world that they need in order to best heal. The other reason why I really love these programs for victim rehabilitation 
is because every single person's healing might be a little bit different and it might be different depending on the day. So introducing people to a number of different support networks and a number of different methods of healing and empowering them to t make those choices for themselves can be hugely helpful along the journey that they're on right now and to make them feel safer on campus and in their everyday lives. So when we think about the impacts of sexual violence on campus, uh, our first thoughts are always, well, it's happening at parties, right? So maybe it would, the impact would be that we'll go to less parties. This type of violence is much more pervasive than that. It can have huge impacts on someone's self-esteem. It can also impact their capacity even to go to class, right? So we're closing doors for our young people when they haven't even gotten started yet. So to be able to create an environment of uh, sexual health and safety on our campuses uh, would have a huge impact on the outcomes of students across the board. No one wants to be sexually assaulted and no one grows up wanting to be a perpetrator of sexual assault. That's not what anyone wants. So if we can give people the tools to avoid those two uh, outcomes, it makes a huge difference to their futures in school and then beyond. The types of workshops that we provide not only um, help people to prevent violence going forward, but they also allow for healing for people who've been previously victimized, and they, they make it safer for people in terms of taking care of themselves. If you know that it's not your fault, and you can move on. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Brown. I'm a student at Carleton University. Uh, today I had actually just taken a Strong Orange course. It's a really phenomenal course. Uh, I found that I was really engaged, it was really outgoing, and would recommend it for anyone to come and take a course through them. It really opened my eyes of like how um, often sexual assault happens on campuses. Hi, my name is Hannah. I was here with self-defense with Strong Orange. So I learned a lot of stuff and now I knew that who I'm really is and it teach me like a bunch of stuff that women need to defend ourselves. So I really like the orange, um, uh, strong orange, self-defense. Okay, so my name is Leah. I'm a recent graduate from Carleton University as well as Algonquin College, and I'm currently a volunteer with Ottawa Victim Services, and I've been with them for three years at this point. So I feel as though that participating in the Strong Orange workshop has been very important and influential for me because a lot of times you're not talking about sexual violence, especially on campuses. It's very hush-hush, nobody wants to get a negative stigma. And with this workshop, you not only talk about what could happen with other people if it happens, but what if it happens to you? So you've gone through a little bit of self-defense tips, basic tips that, nothing that you need to be technically trained on, but just knowing you know, how to react if you were put in a position where you feel unsafe, where you feel that you could be a target of violence. And I think that's very important. I think it's super important to talk about uh, violence, sexual violence in the context of like different schools and uh, professionally and all of that in these different contexts because we don't speak about them. It's still a very taboo topic. People still don't know how to respond to them. It kind of shows you the different situations you could be in and how these situations come to be. So it was just very critical of like uh, certain professions, uh, certain uh, contexts where people become more vulnerable and how they become more vulnerable. and. For example, like what I thought was really nice about this was the self-defense techniques because it's always uh, we always victim blame. We're always like you shouldn't be in this kind of situation, but when you are in that situation, I mean, there's little that you can do, so you might as well be prepared and just learn about these things.